number 17. Analysis of a compound indicates that it contains 77.55% xenon and 22.45% fluorine by mass. And then we have to do B, C, and D for this video. So let's start on B. Letter B just says we have to write a Lewis structure for the compound, that's 77.55% xenon and 22.45% fluorine. Now, if you notice, there's no letter A here because letter A, which was the last video, if you guys are on the playlist, was to find out the empirical formula between these two percents. And that's exactly what we did. So if you want to go back and figure out why this compound is XEF2, go for it. The whole video is over there. But now we're just going to write the Lewis structure for this. So this is pretty straightforward, right? Your Lewis structure is always going to be the least electronegative in the middle between xenon and fluorine. Fluorine is the most electronegative element, so xenon has to go in the middle. Surrounded by the two fluorines, uh, I guess I'll put one fluorine on the top and one fluorine on the bottom. That's good. Draw your valence electrons, right? Uh, xenon is in group 8A or 18. It's a noble gas. It has eight valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And fluorine has seven. So I put seven dots around fluorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You make a single bond. So dot to dot, single bond, dot to dot, single bond. You just make sure that your outer elements have the octet first. And this fluorine has eight electrons. This fluorine has eight electrons, so that's good. And xenon, even though it's got 12, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10. Just kidding, I can't count, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10. It's got 10 in the middle, but that's okay because um, xenon can have an expanded octet because it, it has access to those d orbitals. So this is your Lewis structure, and B is done. Now it says predict the shape of the molecules of the compound. I think uh, we only have one molecule here, so I'm going to strip away this plural, and we're just going to predict the shape. So whenever we're predicting the shape, we always look at the center element. So you always see what's going on with the center element. And I'm sure that your teacher or professor probably wants you to memorize, um, you know, all of your geometries. That's what the shape is, your molecular geometries. So you might have to memorize this chart, but I'll walk you through it. Now, we always look at xenon, right? And we talk about what's going on. Well, with xenon, it seems like he's, or, you know, this, this element is bound to two elements. So that's a X group on your chart. So I have two X's, right? And how many lone pairs? One, two, three. So I'm looking for two X groups and three lone pairs. The center element on this is the A. So for example, Linear, if this shape was linear, I have two X's, right? But do I have any lone pairs around A? No, so that one's not it. I'm going to keep finding two X's. So here's one with two X's, but this has one lone pair. So that's not it. Two X's, but now you got two lone pairs. So this one's got to be it. So I'm going to highlight this. Here it is. And this is linear. I have my X in the middle surrounded by my two fluorines and I got three lone pairs. So what is the shape? The shape of the molecule is linear. And maybe I'll highlight that. So that's already done. That's letter C. So maybe I will just say that this is B. This is C, and C is done. Now for letter D, it says, what hybridization is consistent with the shape you predicted? So there's a couple of things here. 
hybridization is for all your elements, except for hydrogen, right? Because hydrogen only has one electron. So since they didn't say specifically what hybridization we're looking for, I'm going to find out the hybridization for the 2Fs and the xenon. Now, this is the information that we have to memorize for hybridization. These are grouped in the specific orbitals in which that are overlapping to form your bonds. And hybridization, sp, sp2, sp3, and so on, they correspond with how many letters there are. So literally, like sp2, there's one s and two p's. p2 means you have two p's. And you have a total of three letters. sp3, you got three p's plus one s, so that's four letters, and it works for all of them. Just know that the number of letters corresponds to the number of things that are around the element. And one thing is either classified as one single bond, one double bond. So even though you have two bonds there, it's still classified as one thing, one triple bond, and one lone pair. So let's look for xenon. So what does xenon have? How many things does xenon have? Well, it's got one single bond. That's one thing. It's got another single bond. That's two things. And it's got one lone pair. That's three things four things, and five things. I won't classify these as part of xenon because they're part of fluorine. So for xenon, I have five things. So that's five letters. And the five letters is sp3d. So for xenon, the hybridization is sp3d. Now let's do it for the fluorine. Let's do the one down here. And maybe I will get rid of these now, just so that we don't get confused. Oh, there goes one dot. Got to put it back. Okay. Now let's look at fluorine. What does fluorine have? Well, fluorine has now one single bond, because this bond is shared between xenon and fluorine. And now it's got one lone pair. That's two things. Three things four things. So four things, four letters, you're getting it, sp3. And then we will strip these away because we'll just do the other fluorine, but you might guess what that fluorine is because it looks identical to the one on the bottom. So this fluorine has got a single bond, that's one thing, one lone pair, two things, another lone pair, three things, one last lone pair, that's four things. So four things, four letters, SP3. And there are all your hybridizations for this uh, molecule. So you got the fluorines that are SP3 hybridized, and you got the xenon that's SP3D hybridized, and we are good to go. Check this off. Moving on to the next question. What'd you think? Hopefully this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's keep working hard. Keep studying. I believe in you when you take your next test or quiz. Good luck, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.